like and subscribe, and you'll have amazing luck for the rest of the week. 10 Things You Didn't Know About the Extinction of the Dinosaurs Today, we'll be looking at the rise and fall of an era. Today, we're looking into crazy conspiracy theories, trying to uncover the truth of why we aren't roaming around with dinosaurs today. And we start with theory number 10, Noah's Flood Sweep Away the Whole Dinosaur Family from the Face of the Earth. Even in stories, dinosaurs sure have a way of scaring the souls out of our bodies. And as they should, these creatures were huge. And by that, I don't mean the typical large, I mean as large as the Hollywood sign. We'll begin with the stories from the Bible about the great floods in Noah's time, where the only animals that survived were the ones in Noah's Ark. Scientists suggest that most dinosaurs seem to have died from a watery event that occurred. However, they do believe that these creatures weren't extinct from one event but instead eradicated following a series of stages that ultimately led to their extinction. Let's put on our science class safety goggles and look into fossil deposits and how the soil is structured. The way soil is layered is evidence of which direction it originated and what agent was used to move it. Following detailed research, it's clear that the shift may have been an occurrence such as a great flood. Further supporting the theory of dinosaurs' extinction by a flood is one fossil site in North America. Evidence there points out that there were remains of different animals and not just dinosaurs. They ranged from the biggest dinosaurs around to much smaller animals, such as birds, fish, and lizards. The only way they can assume this phenomenon occurred is through a giant flooding catastrophe. Number 9. The Rise of a New Era The era in which most dinosaurs lived was known as the Cretaceous Era. Their extinction happened at the boundary of the Cretaceous and Paleogene eras. The Cretaceous period happened about 145 million years ago, being characterized by a warmer climate and highlighted as the genesis of the separation of Earth into continents as we know them today. It was also when dinosaurs, flying reptiles, and very, very large aquatic animals existed. This period ended with the extinction of the dinosaurs, thus paving the way for the Paleogene era. It was much cooler at this point. And at the beginning of the Paleogene era, there was little to no existence of any animal larger than 55 pounds on land. The extinction of the dinosaurs was a marker of the rise of a new era. Number 8. It wasn't the biggest ever mass extinction. An asteroid indeed caused the extinction of many plants and animals. But that wasn't the largest mass extinction. The largest ever extinction was referred to as the Permian-Triassic extinction, better known by its shorter name, the Permian extinction. It's been described as a series of extinction pulses that led to the greatest mass extinction ever known on Earth. It led to an elimination of 95% of marine aquatic life and about 70% of land animals too. Nearly all life was wiped off the face of the Earth over 15 million years. There's claims that the extinction was much more rapid, but the greatest loss was felt in the last quarter of the period. It was devastatingly characterized as among the largest mass extinction ranking top 5 in the world. Though it's unclear what the actual cause of this extinction was, a few scientists are working towards piecing together what happened. Some claims may have been that it was caused by global warming, leaving the marine animals unable to breathe, or perhaps mass coverage of the world in basalt and lava floods. Number 7. Climate Change There was a definite and sudden change in the climate happening right after the meteorite collision. There was an immediate drop in temperature soon after. This brought about the death of many species rapidly. When plant life goes missing in the food chain, every animal on the food chain is going to suffer. And this was no different. Herbivores began to die, followed by the carnivores who consumed those herbivores. This climate change led to a major disruption of the worldwide food chain. Number 6. Not all dinosaurs are extinct. The theory behind the extinction of dinosaurs has left many unanswered questions. Due to the reduced availability of food due to the chain disruption, dinosaurs had to adopt new feeding habits, therefore over millions of years developing beaks. I know it might not make much sense now, but think about it. Amongst these animals with enormous body masses, when the only edible food after the asteroids hit were seeds, those with finer control to pick up and consume those seeds would eventually win out. 
and given enough time, that would evolve into a beak. Imagine a T-Rex with a beak instead of a mouth and with lots of feathers all over. It already begins to look a lot like a chicken, minus the large size and appetite of a T-Rex. Evidence does show that beaked dinosaurs that survived are the ancestors of today's birds. So, the next time you're eating some KFC, know that you're eating a dinosaur. Number 5. There isn't one sole event that led to dinosaur extinction. After a comet or large asteroid collided with the Earth, it caused long-lasting severe environmental changes. These changes included a period of dim sunlight, which was the result of solar radiation. The absorption of fumes in the atmosphere and the stratosphere brought about tremendous change. This drop in temperature and sunlight inhibited and even killed photosynthetic plants. Especially concerning was the vast limestone, gypsum, and hydrocarbon at the impact site that would cause the suffocation of animals. Another contributing factor was a guess that we made was an extrapolation made from observing modern-day birds. Without sunlight, dinosaurs had a deficiency of vitamin D3 in developing dinosaur eggs, which would cause them to die before hatching. Species who could not evolve to overcome this vitamin D3 deficiency would eventually be extinguished due to the failure to reproduce. Number 4. Rise of Mammals The dinosaur era was clearly dominated mostly by large reptiles, and these reptiles were at the top of the food chain. Whereas in that day, mammals were very small in size, and they existed as creatures of the night with the constant fear of becoming prey. This left mammals hiding in the corners of tree trunks to avoid being a reptile snack. Though with the extinction of the large species of reptiles, other animals could live in peace. Mammals soon began assuming the top of the food chain. After maintaining a low profile for over 150 million years, these early true mammals were small insect-eating creatures adapt to maintaining nightlife activities. These characteristics would later be used as the basis to distinguish mammals from other species, such as low-lying legs for movement, a larger brain capacity, and mammary glands to suckle their young ones. In just the first 10 years after extinction of the dinosaurs, the world changed and we saw an explosion in both the number and variety of mammals. Let's find out if you're a gradualist or a catastrophic believer right after this. Be sure to let us know in the comments what you believe actually happened. Number 3. Gradualist versus Catastrophic Paleontologist The only thing these two groups of paleontologists agree on is the timeline of the demise of the dinosaurs. Everything else in between is up for debate. The prize, if there was one, would be to reveal the most compelling evidence of their claim. A gradualist believes that the extinction of the dinosaurs was slow and steady. They attribute their extinction to environmental changes. They claim that species may have been unable to adapt to the changes in the environment. This left these species weak and extinct. These changes were brought on by meteorites colliding with the Earth. It cleared out the species and stages from the weakest to the strongest one. On the other hand, the catastrophic theory claims that there was one major tragic event that caused the eradication of a great deal of species. They garnered support from the evidence that suggests there was a great presence of iridium in the geological strata. The source of this was concluded to be a result of a comet colliding into the Earth. Number 2. The Survivors not all dinosaurs died during the mass extinction. There was a group of them known as avian dinosaurs. In other words, birds that survived and flourished. The species would migrate to North America, where they would live for another 100 million years. Other survivors, of course, included frogs, lizards, turtles, snakes, and mammals. And notably, alligators and crocodiles made the list and are hardly unchanged to this day. A great deal of evidence of this is shown from fossils excavated from Colorado and New Mexico. Some T-Rexes actually did survive for quite a while. Though this theory has been bashed by many scientists who claim that the dating of fossils recovered in that area is incorrect. Well, how would we know where the truth lies? One thing's for sure though, there were animals that survived the dinosaur extinction and are present even today.
And with that, it's now time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber, so if you come across a photo online and you want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it in our future video. And number one, the asteroid theory. A big meteorite hit the Earth and it killed all the dinosaurs. The end. No, let's back up a little bit because it didn't happen exactly as you imagined. There wasn't a meteorite that hit the Earth and like the snap of a finger, all the dinosaurs died and fell to the ground. Basically, two asteroids hit the Earth. One small asteroid came at the Earth first, then followed by a bigger asteroid, which hit in the now known Gulf of Mexico. It's believed that the smaller asteroid's effects were felt much later on. It caused a change in the weather, which consequently made the plants begin to adapt, causing a great death of many plants and animal species. 